In the small town of Willow Creek, Walmart was not just a grocery store. It was a lifeline for the community. Open 24 hours, it offered everything from fresh produce to late night snacks. For many, it was a second home. However, for a select few, it held a darker secret. Late one Friday evening, Emma, a college student working the night shift, stepped into the fluorescent glow of the store. The rhythmic hum of the refrigeration units and the echo of her footsteps on the polished tile made the aisles feel eerily empty. She had gotten used to the quietness of her late night shifts, but tonight felt different. An uneasy chill settled in her stomach, and she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. As she pushed her cart down the cleaning supplies aisle, she caught a glimpse of something in her peripheral vision. A shadowy figure flitted between the shelves, just out of sight. Emma stopped, heart racing, and turned her head, but there was nothing there. She brushed it off as fatigue. The hours had been long, and it was easy to let her imagination run wild in the stillness of the store. An hour passed, and she made her way to the back of the store, where the seasonal items were kept. As she restocked the shelves, a strange sound broke the silence. A faint, soft giggle that echoed through the aisle. Emma froze, feeling the hairs on her arms stand on end. She turned, half expecting to see a child peeking around the corner, but the aisle was deserted. She called out, Hello? Is anyone there? Silence. Must be the late hour getting to me, she muttered, shaking off the discomfort. She continued her work, but felt a growing sense of unease. The giggle returned, louder this time, echoing around her. Emma decided it was time for a break. She headed towards the employee lounge, hoping a cup of coffee would steady her nerves. As she entered the small break room, she glanced at the clock on the wall. It was just past midnight. The dim light flickered and she rubbed her eyes, trying to rid herself of the fatigue. Just then, her phone buzzed on the table. A text from her friend, Sarah, read, You okay? Heard some weird stuff about the store tonight. Emma frowned, typing back, Weird stuff? Like what? The reply was almost instantaneous. Some customers claim they've seen a little girl wandering the aisles alone after midnight. They say she disappears before you can approach her. A chill raced down Emma's spine as she remembered the giggle. Just rumors, she typed back, but uncertainty gnawed at her. The hair on her neck prickled again, and she felt a sudden urge to return to the main area of the store. She had to keep busy. As she stepped back into the aisles, the lights flickered, plunging the store into darkness for a split second before returning. Emma paused, scanning the aisles. She could feel the weight of something unspoken in the air. The giggle echoed again, closer this time, and her heart began to race. Who's there? She shouted, her voice shaky. From the corner of her eye, she saw a flash of white, like a dress flitting just out of reach. Without thinking, Emma followed, heart pounding pushing her cart as she turned the corner. The aisle was empty, just shelves stocked with household supplies, but the giggle lingered in the air, unsettling and taunting. Okay, this isn't funny anymore, she called out, trying to keep her voice steady. She stepped further into the aisle, the fluorescent lights flickering overhead. That's when she saw her, a small girl, no more than six or seven years old, standing at the far end of the aisle. The girl wore a simple white dress, like her dark hair hanging in disheveled curls. She stared directly at Emma, eyes wide and innocent, yet filled with an unfathomable sadness. Emma's breath caught in her throat. Hey, are you lost? She took a step forward, but the girl just smiled sadly and turned, darting behind the shelves. Emma rushed after her, heart racing. Wait, she called, rounding the corner, but the aisle was empty again. Panic set in. Had she really seen a little girl? Or was it all in her head? Just as she was about to retreat, she noticed something on the floor. A small, tattered doll lying abandoned between the shelves. It was a frayed fabric doll with button eyes missing one of its limbs. Emma picked it up, a shiver running down her spine. She felt a pull to return to the spot where she had seen the girl, hoping to find her again. As she moved back down the aisle, she suddenly heard a whisper, soft and urgent. Help me. The whisper hung in the air like a ghostly echo, sending chills down Emma's spine. She gripped the doll tighter, its rough fabric grounding her in the unsettling reality of the moment. Help you, she called out, glancing around anxiously. What do you need help with? Silence fell once more, thick and suffocating, as if the store itself was holding its breath. The lights above flickered again, plunging the aisles into an eerie twilight. Emma hesitated, torn between fear and an inexplicable urge to help this lost child. 
If you can hear me, where are you? She pressed, heart racing. The whisper came again, more insistent this time. In the back. Feeling a strange compulsion, Emma followed the sound, moving toward the back of the store. The aisles felt longer, more daunting as she traversed the familiar layout, each step heavy with a sense of foreboding. The soft giggle returned, now mingled with the sound of tiny footsteps. She turned into the toy section, her heart pounding against her ribcage. Are you here? She called out, scanning the shelves filled with colorful boxes and plush toys. Just then, she spotted the girl again, standing at the far end of the aisle, her white dress shimmering in the dim light. There you are! Emma exclaimed, relief flooding her. But the girl didn't respond. She just continued to stare, her face shadowed by the flickering lights. Emma took a cautious step forward. Why are you here alone? Where are your parents? The girl finally spoke, her voice barely above a whisper. They left me. They don't want me anymore. Emma's heart sank. That's not true. I'm sure they're looking for you. Come with me. I can help you find them. She reached out a hand, but the girl shook her head. No, they're gone. They don't care. A wave of sadness washed over Emma. She knew that look. It was the look of abandonment. I care, she insisted, determined to reach this child. I'll help you. Just tell me what you need. For a moment, the girl remained silent, her dark eyes piercing through the shadows. I want to go home. I want my doll, she said, pointing to the tattered toy in Emma's hands. Emma glanced down at the doll, its button eyes staring back at her. Is this yours? The girl nodded, and the sadness in her eyes deepened. But it's broken. It can't go home. Emma's heart ached for the little girl. We can fix it together. Let me help you. As she moved closer, the girl stepped back, her expression shifting from sorrow to fear. You shouldn't be here, she whispered, her voice trembling. It's not safe. Before Emma could respond, the lights flickered violently and the temperature in the aisle plummeted. She felt an overwhelming sense of dread, as if the air itself was warning her to leave. What do you mean? She asked, instinctively stepping back. They're coming, the girl whispered, eyes wide with terror. You have to go. You can't stay. Panic surged through Emma. The store had transformed into a labyrinth of shadows, the familiar aisles twisting and turning as if alive. She turned to leave, but found that every path was blocked by an unseen force. What's happening? Leave the doll, the girl screamed, her voice rising above the chaos. They want it. They want you. Emma gripped the doll tighter, not wanting to let it go. It was a lifeline to this little girl, and she couldn't bear to abandon it. But the urgency in the girl's voice was real, and she felt a rush of adrenaline. I can't leave you, she shouted, desperation creeping into her tone. The flickering lights became erratic, and shadows lengthened ominously around her. Emma could feel a presence moving through the aisles, an unsettling energy that sent fear crashing over her like a wave. Please, don't leave me, she cried out, but the girl was gone, vanished into thin air. Emma stumbled backward, clutching the doll to her chest. Suddenly, she heard a cacophony of whispers all around her, voices overlapping and rising in intensity. Leave. Now. Danger. The urgency broke through the fear and Emma turned on on her heels, racing towards the exit. As she sprinted past the aisles, the whispers crescendoed, echoing her panic. She felt a cold breath against her neck, and in that moment she knew she wasn't alone. She reached the front of the store, nearly colliding with a display of snacks. Breathing heavily, she pushed through the automatic doors and stumbled outside, gasping for air. The cool night air felt like a balm on her skin, and she didn't stop running until she reached her car. Once inside, Emma locked the doors, still clutching the doll. The whispers faded, but the memory of the girl lingered in her mind. She took a deep breath, trying to calm her racing heart. What had just happened? Was it real? As she glanced down at the doll, she noticed something new. A name tag sewn onto its dress that hadn't been there before. Lila. Lila, she whispered, a wave of understanding washing over her. This wasn't just a doll. It was a piece of the girl's story. Emma knew she couldn't leave it behind. With a mix of fear and determination, she decided to return. The little girl needed her help, and somehow she felt she couldn't abandon her. Emma turned the ignition, her heart set on finding Lila again. Story number two. It was one of those quiet nights at the Walmart in the outskirts of town. The fluorescent lights flickered intermittently, casting an eerie glow over the aisles, and the only sound came from the occasional hum of the overhead speakers. It was the graveyard shift, 
and for 23-year-old Jenny, it was just another routine night. She'd worked at Walmart for over a year, and the midnight hours were usually uneventful. Just her, the stock, and the occasional visit from the security team. As Jenny pushed her cart down the cleaning supplies aisle, she noticed something odd. The shelves were inexplicably stocked with products that hadn't been there before. Old-fashioned items that seemed out of place, like tin cans of soap powder and boxes of vintage-style cleaners. Puzzled, she brushed it off as a prank by her co-workers, perhaps a setup for some Halloween festivities. Then she heard it, a faint whisper echoing through the store. The voice was soft, like a child's calling her name. Jenny, Jenny. Her heart raced as she turned, expecting to see a customer or one of her co-workers playing a joke. But the aisle was empty, the shelves standing silent under the dim lights. Hello? She called out, her voice wavering. No response. She glanced at the security monitor mounted on the wall, but it showed nothing unusual. Just the empty aisles of the store, dimly lit and still. Chalking it up to tiredness, she continued her work, but the whispering lingered in her mind, gnawing at her curiosity. As she moved on to the electronics section, she caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of her eye. It was quick, a flash of something darting between the rows of televisions. Jenny's breath caught in her throat. Was it just her imagination? She approached cautiously, each step echoing in the stillness. Suddenly, the overhead lights flickered violently before plunging the store into darkness. Jenny gasped, her heart pounding in her chest. She fumbled for her flashlight, its beam cutting through the pitch black as she tried to regain her composure. The eerie silence enveloped her, thick and oppressive, broken only by the soft hum of the backup generators kicking in. With a sigh of relief, the lights came back on, but something felt off. The aisles seemed more distorted, almost like they were reshaped in the darkness. She turned back toward the electronics section, but now the televisions displayed static and the sound of distorted whispers filled the air. It was as if the store had awakened from a slumber, revealing secrets hidden in the shadows. Jenny, come play with us. The voice was louder now, more insistent. It echoed off the walls, wrapping around her like a cold breeze. She felt a chill run down her spine as she stepped back, unsure of where to go. That's when she saw it, a small figure darting between the rows of TVs. It was too small to be an adult, its movements erratic and quick. Jenny's instincts kicked in and she followed, heart racing, desperate to find the source of the voice. The figure led her through the aisles and as she rounded a corner, she stumbled upon the toy section. Toys were scattered everywhere, as if a storm had swept through. In the center of the chaos, a small girl with long, dark hair stood completely still, facing away from her. Jenny's breath caught in her throat. Um, hello? She called, hesitantly. The girl turned slowly, her face pale, eyes wide and vacant. I'm lost, the girl whispered, her voice barely above a whisper. Can you help me? Jenny felt a rush of empathy mixed with dread. Where's your mom? She asked, trying to keep her voice steady. But before the girl could answer, a loud crash echoed from the back of the store, startling them both. Jenny turned, adrenaline surging. Stay here, she instructed, her voice firm despite the fear gnawing at her. As she moved towards the sound, she felt a pull, as if the darkness was wrapping around her, drawing her back. The lights flickered again, casting long shadows along the floor. A sense of foreboding washed over her. Something was wrong. She reached the source of the noise, a fallen display of garden tools, and picked up a nearby phone to call for help. But as she dialed, she realized the signal was dead. Panic clawed at her throat. She was alone. Jenny turned back toward the toy aisle, but the girl was gone. The aisles were empty again, as if she had never been there. Her heart raced as she stumbled back, a wave of nausea crashing over her. What was happening? She needed to get out, but as she turned to leave, the lights flickered once more and she heard the girl's voice again, louder now, almost angry. Why won't you help me? The store felt alive, the aisles twisting in impossible ways, creating a maze that kept shifting around her. The soft whispers continued, growing more frantic, echoing her racing thoughts. Help me! Help! Help me! They seemed to surround her, resonating through the cold air. Where are you? She shouted, her voice echoing back at her. In the stillness that followed, fear coiled tightly in her chest, suffocating her. She stumbled back towards the electronics section, her mind racing to make sense of the events unfolding around her. 
Just as she reached the corner of the aisle, she felt a sudden chill, as if the temperature had dropped drastically. The flickering lights cast fleeting shadows that seemed to dart out of the corners of her eyes. Jenny turned to look and her breath caught in her throat. There, standing amidst the shadows, was the girl again, but this time the girl looked different. Her eyes were sunken and dark, her skin pale and ghostly, almost translucent under the harsh lights. You're not supposed to be here, she said, her voice a haunting whisper filled with a sense of urgency. They're watching. What do you mean? Jenny felt the cold sweat trickling down her back as she took a cautious step closer. Who's watching? What do you want from me? The girl looked at her with wide, sorrowful eyes, and for a brief moment, Jenny felt a deep connection, a longing to help. You have to leave, she urged, her voice trembling. If you stay, they will take you too. Take me? Who are they? Jenny asked, panic rising in her throat. But the girl only shook her head, her expression shifting from fear to a hollow resignation. You need to help me first. I can't find my way home. At that moment, Jenny felt a wave of empathy wash over her. Okay, she said, her voice steadier than she felt. Let's find your mom together. But just as she reached out to the girl, the lights flickered again and the air grew heavy with an unseen presence. Suddenly, the sound of a mechanical whirring filled the aisle and the faint voice of the store's intercom crackled to life. Attention customers, the store will be closing in 15 minutes. Please make your final selections. The voice echoed, devoid of warmth or humanity. Jenny turned back to the girl, but she was gone again, leaving behind a lingering chill that wrapped around her like a shroud. With a growing sense of dread, she rushed to the front of the store, hoping to find help. The security office was just ahead, but as she approached, she saw the door was ajar, swinging slightly as if inviting her in. The room was dark and empty, save for a flickering monitor displaying grainy footage of the store. Her heart sank as she watched the live feed, images of aisles that were hauntingly familiar yet eerily distorted. Shadows moved where no one stood, and in the corner of the screen, she caught sight of the girl again, her figure fading in and out like a glitch in the system. Help! Jenny shouted, but the only response was the buzzing of the monitor. She turned and sprinted out of the office, desperately searching for an exit, her breath hitching in her throat. The store was a labyrinth, the aisles warping around her as she tried to retrace her steps. Suddenly, the whispers returned, louder and more insistent. Join us! Join us! They filled her mind, overwhelming her senses. Panic surged as she ran, the shadows closing in around her. She stumbled into the grocery section, the air thick with the scent of stale food. That's when she saw them, a group of children, all looking just like the girl. They stood silently in the aisle, their eyes vacant, their faces twisted in expressions of longing and sorrow. They were all lost souls, trapped within the store, just like her. Help us, they cried in unison, their voices rising into a cophony. We want to go home. Jenny backed away, terror coursing through her. What happened to you? She yelled, searching for a way out. The children reached out toward her, their hands ghostly and translucent. You have to help us. In that moment, everything clicked. The store was a prison, and she had stumbled into its dark secrets. The whispers, the shadows, the children, they were all victims of some malevolent force that thrived within the aisles of Walmart. Feeling a surge of determination, Jenny shouted back, I will help you. Just show me how. The children's expressions shifted from despair to hope, and in a haunting whisper, they guided her to the back of the store. As she followed their lead, the walls began to close in around her fry, the lights flickering violently. Hurry, one of the children urged, pointing toward a flickering exit sign that seemed to shimmer with a faint glow. With every ounce of strength, Jenny pushed forward, but just as she reached the door, an icy hand gripped her shoulder. She turned, her heart pounding as she faced a dark figure, looming behind her a wraith-like presence that exuded a palpable malice. Where do you think you're going? It hissed, its voice echoing with a thousand tortured souls. Let me go! Jenny screamed, but the shadows tightened their grip, dragging her back into the depths of the store. But as darkness enveloped her, she felt the warmth of the children's hands reaching for her, pulling her back. Don't give up, they urged, their voices intertwining with her resolve. In that moment of clarity, Jenny summoned all her strength, breaking free from the figure's grasp. She sprinted towards the exit. 
the children's whispers guiding her, urging her on. With a final push, she burst through the door, crashing into the cold night air. The shadows receded behind her, and she turned to see the Walmart looming ominously, but no longer as a prison. The whispers faded, replaced by a haunting silence. Jenny knew she was free. But as she looked back, a shiver ran down her spine. The store stood eerily still, the flickering lights dimming into darkness. The whispers, now a distant echo, lingered in her mind, and as she walked away, she realized that some ghosts never truly leave. They merely wait for someone to help them find their way home. Story number three. The fluorescent lights hummed a dull, unending drone overhead as Emily pushed her cart down the endless aisles of Walmart. It was nearly midnight and the store was empty, save for the occasional rustle of a shopping car cart or a distant thud from the stockroom. Emily worked the night shift, a choice she made to balance school and her finances. It wasn't glamorous, but the pay was decent and she enjoyed the quiet of the store at night. As she restocked shelves, Emily couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. The air felt heavy, thick with an inexplicable tension that seemed to cling to her skin. She brushed it off as fatigue and continued her work, her mind wandering to the ghost stories her grandmother used to tell. The tales of restless spirits and haunted places always sent chills down her spine, but she never thought they could hold any truth. It was during her break that the strange occurrences began. Sitting in the break room, Emily absentmindedly flipped through her phone when the lights flickered. She glanced around, attributing the momentary darkness to the ancient wiring of the building. Just as she returned to scrolling, the temperature in the room plummeted, and she felt an unsettling draft. The hairs on her arms stood on end, and she couldn't shake the feeling that she was not alone. When her break was over, Emily returned to the sales floor, a nagging sense of dread in her chest. She continued stocking shelves, forcing herself to focus on the task at hand. It was then she heard it, a soft whisper, barely audible, drifting through the aisles. She froze, her heart racing. Hello, she called out, her voice trembling. No answer. Just the echo of her own voice, swallowed by the vast emptiness of the store. Shaking her head, she continued to work, but the whispers persisted, growing louder and more distinct. It sounded like a child's voice, playful yet sorrowful. Help me, it pleaded, a chilling contrast to the sterile atmosphere of the store. The sound seemed to be coming from the toy aisle. Against her better judgment, Emily followed the sound, her curiosity outweighing her fear. As she approached the toy section, the atmosphere changed. The air grew colder, and the once bright colors of the toys dulled in her vision. The shelves loomed like dark sentinels, watching her as she walked deeper into the aisle. Suddenly, a stuffed bear toppled off a shelf, landing at her feet. Emily jumped back, her breath hitching in her throat. She glanced around, but no one else was there. This isn't funny, she muttered to herself, trying to shake off the unease. But the voice persisted, now louder and more insistent. Help me, please. It came from the end of the aisle where the shadows seemed to thicken, pooling in the corners like dark water. Emily hesitated, her instincts screaming at her to turn back, but the childlike plea tugged at her heart. Hello, is someone there? She called out, her voice wavering. The only response was a low, sorrowful giggle that echoed through the aisle. She took a cautious step forward, her pulse racing. As she rounded the corner, she saw it. A small figure standing at the far end of the aisle, shrouded in darkness. Help me! The figure cried again, its voice sweet and innocent. Emily squinted, trying to make out the shape, but the dim light made it hard to see. The figure was small, perhaps the size of a child, dressed in old-fashioned clothes that seemed to belong to another time. Who are you? Emily asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The figure took a step closer, and in that moment the store seemed to shake, the lights flickering violently. Emily stumbled backward, fear flooding her veins. The figure was getting closer, its face obscured by shadows, but the sorrow in its voice was unmistakable. Help me find my way home, it pleaded, reaching out a small hand. Emily felt a wave of compassion mixed with terror. Something was profoundly wrong, and she felt an inexplicable connection to the lost spirit. Before she could respond, the lights went out completely, plunging the store into darkness. Panic surged within her. She fumbled for her phone, the dim screen illuminating her trembling hands. As she held it up, the figure was gone. The silence that followed was deafening,
broken only by the distant sound of the automatic doors whooshing open and closed, as if a customer had entered. Emily took a deep breath, her heart pounding. This isn't real, she whispered to herself, desperate to believe it. But deep down, she knew something was terribly wrong. With her heart racing, she moved cautiously through the aisles, every shadow feeling like it was watching her. She was not alone, and whatever was haunting the store was not done with her yet. Emily leaned against a shelf, her heart thudding loudly in her chest as the silence enveloped her. She tried to steady her breath, but the memory of the small figure lingered in her mind. What do you want? She whispered into the darkness, her voice shaking. No answer came, only the echo of her own fear reverberating back. Gathering her courage, she decided to investigate further, hoping that maybe, just maybe, she could help whatever spirit was haunting the store. She recalled the stories her grandmother used to tell, about souls trapped in places they once knew, unable to move on until someone helped them. Okay, she said aloud, determination creeping into her voice. I'll help you. Just show me what you need. As if in response, the lights flickered back on, illuminating the aisle around her. But the atmosphere had changed. The warmth of the store's fluorescent lights felt colder, almost sterile, and the shadows seemed to stretch longer than they should. Following a gut instinct, Emily moved toward the back of the store, where the aisles grew narrower, lined with forgotten items and remnants of old sails. As she walked, she felt an odd sensation, as if the very air around her was charged with energy. Suddenly, she heard it again, a soft whisper, this time accompanied by a faint sound of laughter, like the chime of a bell. Emily's stomach nodded. Where are you? She called out, her voice more assertive this time. I want to help you. The laughter grew louder, echoing down the deserted aisles. It felt, it felt playful yet taunting, as if the spirit was leading her deeper into the store. She followed the sound, turning corners and weaving through the aisles, until she reached the back wall where a large storage area lay hidden behind shelves. As she stepped into the shadowy corner, the atmosphere thickened and the lights flickered once more. The space felt suffocating, and the whisper turned into a frantic murmur, as if multiple voices were speaking at once, calling for help. Who are you? Emily shouted, a mix of fear and curiosity fueling her words. What do you want? Suddenly, the storage room door creaked open, and Emily felt an icy draft sweep over her. She hesitated at the threshold, feeling an invisible force beckoning her inside. With a deep breath, she stepped over the threshold, the door slamming shut behind her with a resounding bang. Inside the storage room, the darkness was almost complete. Emily fumbled for her phone, the faint light illuminating shelves stacked high with boxes. As she glanced around, she noticed something odd about the boxes. They were old, dusty, and covered with yellowing labels that read return and damaged. Then out of the corner of her eye, she saw it. A small, dusty teddy bear lying abandoned in the corner, its button eyes glinting in the dim light. The bear looked remarkably similar to the one she had seen in the toy aisle earlier. As she reached down to pick it up, a chill ran down her spine. Help me, a voice whispered, echoing through the room. Emily turned sharply, but no one was there. The air grew heavier, thick with tension, as if the very walls were alive with the weight of lost memories. Is this what you want? She asked holding the teddy bear tightly. Is this yours? Suddenly, the lights flickered violently, casting long shadows across the room. The laughter from before returned, now mixed with cries of distress. Emily's heart raced as the shadows began to shift and swirl, coalescing into a faint outline of a small girl, no more than six or seven years old. Help me find him, the girl cried, her voice filled with desperation. He's lost. I can't go home without him. Who is lost? Emily pressed, her voice trembling. Who do you need? The girl pointed to a box labeled toys, nestled high on a shelf. He's in there. Please, you have to help me. Without thinking, Emily reached up, her fingers brushing against the dusty surface of the box. The moment she touched it, a rush of energy coursed through her and the store was filled with a blinding light. She shielded her eyes, feeling as though she were being pulled into another realm. When the light faded, Emily found herself standing in the aisle again, but everything was different. The colors were brighter, and the shelves were filled with vibrant toys. The girl stood beside her, her eyes wide with hope. There he is, she exclaimed, pointing to a spot just ahead. Emily turned, following the girl's gaze to a small, forgotten stuffed dog resting on a shelf. 
It looked as worn and dusty as the bear she had found. The girl's face lit up with joy, and as Emily reached for the dog, she felt an overwhelming warmth fill the air. Thank you, the girl shouted, her voice ringing with glee. Now I can go home. As Emily handed the stuffed dog to the girl, she felt a surge of energy flow between them. The girl's form began to shimmer and fade, a look of pure happiness on her face. You help me, she said softly before vanishing completely. In that moment, the oppressive weight that had hung over the store lifted, and the air felt lighter, as if a long-lost spirit had finally found peace. Emily stood there, holding the teddy bear and dog in her hands, breathless and bewildered. As she made her way back to the front of the store, she glanced back at the dark storage room. The door creaked open slightly, revealing a faint light within. Emily smiled, knowing that sometimes helping a lost soul could change everything. Exiting the store, she felt a sense of closure wash over her. Walmart might have its ghost stories, but tonight she had become a part of something bigger, an unexpected hero in a place filled with echoes of the past. Story number four. The fluorescent lights flickered overhead in the nearly empty Walmart, casting eerie shadows on the aisles. It was a quiet Tuesday night, and Jenna, a new employee, was working the midnight shift. She had taken the job to help pay off her student loans, but she hadn't expected to feel so alone in such a vast place. As she stocked shelves in the grocery section, Jenna couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. The only sounds were the faint hum of the refrigeration units and the occasional click of the security cameras adjusting. She glanced at her phone. It was 2 a.m. The store was almost completely deserted except for a few late night shoppers and the security guard, Dave, who seemed more interested in his phone than in patrolling the aisles. Hey, Jenna? Dave called from the, the electronics section, his voice echoing slightly. You doing okay? Heard some weird stories about this place. Yeah. I'm fine, Jenna replied with a nervous laugh. What kind of stories? Oh, you know, just that it's haunted. A couple of people have claimed to see things. Figures moving in the aisles when no one is there. You know, typical ghost stuff. He grinned, trying to lighten the mood. Very funny, Jenna said, rolling her eyes. She brushed it off, but a chill ran down her spine. She couldn't deny that the aisles felt more shadowy than usual, and the flickering lights only added to her unease. As the hours crept by, Jenna continued her work, trying to push the spooky thoughts from her mind. But then around 3.30 a.m., she heard it. A faint whispering sound coming from the back of the store. She froze, listening intently. It was soft and unintelligible, but it sent shivers through her. Dave? She called out, but there was no answer. She glanced toward the electronics section where she last saw him. He was gone. With hesitant steps, Jenna moved toward the source of the whispering her heart racing. As she turned the corner into the home goods section, she saw a flickering light at the far end of the aisle. It looked like someone was holding a flashlight. She approached cautiously, her footsteps silent on the tiled floor. Hello, she called out. Is anyone there? The whispering stopped abruptly, replaced by an oppressive silence that hung heavy in the air. As she reached the end of the aisle, the light flickered once more and then extinguished. She peered into the darkness, but saw nothing. A knot formed in her stomach, and she took a step back, only to bump into something solid. Spinning around, she found herself face to face with an old mannequin, its eyes wide and unblinking, dressed in a faded vintage outfit. It was then she noticed that the store had a vintage section, filled with old clothes and furniture. Jenna, you scared me, came Dave's voice from behind her. What are you doing all the way back here? Did you hear that whispering? She asked, her voice trembling. Dave laughed, shaking his head. Just your imagination. It's probably just the wind outside or the air conditioning. Jenna felt a wave of embarrassment wash over her. Yeah, maybe, she said, forcing a smile. I should get back to work. As the clock approached 4 a.m., Jenna tried to focus on her tasks, but the whispering returned, louder this time. It was almost rhythmic, like a chant, and it seemed to echo from the aisles. Jenna looked at Dave, but he was scrolling through his phone, oblivious to the sound. Are you hearing this? Jenna insisted, her voice barely above a whisper. Hear what? Dave looked up, confusion etched on his face. Never mind, she sighed, deciding to confront it alone. She began walking toward the source, each step feeling like a challenge. The whispers grew louder, more urgent, as if beckoning her closer. 
The sound led her to the toy section, where the bright colors and cheerful packaging felt eerily out of place in the dimly lit store. Suddenly, the lights flickered again, and for a moment, Jenna thought she saw a shadow dart across the aisle. She halted, her breath caught in her throat. Jenna? Dave called, finally noticing her absence. Where are you? I'm in toys, she shouted back, not taking her eyes off the aisle where she'd seen the shadow. As she stood frozen, the whispering stopped. The silence was deafening. Just then, a soft giggle echoed through the section, sending a wave of dread crashing over her. Jenna turned and ran back toward Dave, her heart pounding. Did you hear that? She panted when she reached him. Hear what? He looked at her, concern replacing his previous nonchalance. Let's just get to the front of the store. I don't feel right here, she insisted. As they walked briskly back, the lights flickered one last time, and Jenna thought she caught a glimpse of a small figure hiding behind the toy display. But when she looked again, it was gone. Dave glanced at her sideways. You're really freaking me out now. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine, Jenna lied, but deep down, she knew something was very wrong. Suddenly, the loudspeaker crackled to life, startling them both. Attention customers. Uh, the voice was distorted, eerie, and chilling. Let's go, Jenna shouted, pulling Dave toward the front exit. As they hurried past the checkout lines, a cold breeze swept through the store, chilling them to the bone. The lights began to flicker more violently, and the whispering resumed, echoing through the aisles like a dark melody. Run! Jenna screamed as the loudspeaker continued to crackle ominously, a feeling of dread washing over her. Jenna and Dave sprinted toward the front doors, adrenaline pumping through their veins as the fluorescent lights continued to flicker violently overhead. The air was thick with tension, and every step felt like a race against something unseen. As they reached the entrance, they skidded to a halt. The doors wouldn't budge. Why won't they open? Jenna yelled, panic rising in her chest. She slammed her palms against the glass, but it remained locked tight. Maybe it's just a malfunction, Dave suggested, but his voice trembled. Let's try the back exit. They turned and dashed toward the back of the store, the whispers swelling around them like a sinister choir. It felt as if the very walls of Walmart were alive, pulsing with energy. Just as they reached the break room, a sudden crash echoed from the grocery section. A shelf had toppled over, its contents spilling everywhere. What the hell was that? Dave exclaimed, eyes wide. I don't know, but we need to get out of here. Jenna urged, tugging at his sleeve. The air grew colder as they ventured deeper into the store the whispering now a constant, eerie presence. As they approached the break room, Jenna noticed something strange on the floor, old photographs scattered across the tile. She bent down to pick them up, her curiosity peaked despite the terror coursing through her. Each picture depicted different employees from years past, all posing near the same spot, a display of vintage toys. Look at these, Jenna exclaimed, holding one up. The employees looked cheerful, but their faces seemed slightly blurred as if they were fading away. Dave leaned closer, but his attention was drawn away by another sound. A soft, childlike giggle echoing from the toy aisle. Did you hear that? He whispered, his earlier bravado fading. Jenna nodded, her heart racing. We need to keep moving. Just then, the break room door swung open by itself, revealing a darkened space filled with shadows. Jenna's instinct screamed at her to run, but curiosity tugged at her as she stepped inside. The air was heavy, filled with an unsettling energy that made the hairs on her arms stand up. In the corner, an old radio crackled to life, playing a haunting melody that felt strangely familiar. As she listened, Jenna felt a sense of deja vu, as if she had heard this tune in a dream. Suddenly, the radio emitted a loud static burst, and Jenna jumped back, startled. Let's just go! Dave urged again, but Jenna was transfixed by the melody. She felt compelled to stay, a strange pull drawing her deeper into the room. Then a voice broke through the static, a child's voice. Help me, please. Jenna's blood ran cold. Did you hear that? She breathed, glancing at Dave, who was frozen in place. Yeah, what was that? He murmured, his face pale. Help me, please. The voice echoed again, clearer this time. It was coming from a shadowed corner of the break room. Jenna stepped closer, her heart pounding in her chest, and reached out toward the darkness. Suddenly, the lights flickered violently and the room was plunged into darkness. Dave grabbed her arm, his grip tight. Jenna, we have to get out of here now. Just as he spoke, the lights flashed back on, illuminating the corner where Jenna had been drawn. 
There, she saw a small figure, a child, no older than seven, with hollow eyes and a pale, gaunt face. The child's clothes were old-fashioned, like something out of a different era. Help me, the child pleaded again, reaching out with a skeletal hand. Jenna felt an overwhelming surge of empathy. What happened to you? She whispered, stepping closer. The child's eyes widened with fear, and suddenly the room shook violently. You must leave! They're coming! The figure began to flicker like a faulty light bulb, and Jenna felt her heart race as she sensed a dark presence closing in. Who? Who's coming? Jenna cried, but the child faded from view, leaving only a lingering chill in the air. Dave pulled her back, his expression one of sheer terror. We need to go, Jenna. Now! They dashed out of the break room and made their way back to the main area of the store. The lights flickered once more, casting shadows that danced around them like phantoms. The whispering had escalated into a cacophony, a haunting chorus that filled the air. Jenna glanced back toward the toy aisle where she had seen the shadow earlier. It was now dark and still, the whispers fading to an unsettling silence. What if that kid is trapped here? She asked, fear lacing her voice. Are you serious? We can't help them, Dave shouted, panic rising. We just need to get out of here before whatever's haunting this place catches us. As they reached the front doors again, they were greeted by an even more intense force, as if something was trying to keep them inside. Jenna slammed her shoulder against the glass, but it wouldn't budge. Then from behind them came a loud crash. Jenna spun around to see a shopping cart moving by itself, careening toward them. It stopped just inches from their feet, and Jenna could have sworn she saw a small figure darting away into the shadows. Let's just get to the emergency exit, Dave shouted, dragging her toward the back of the store once more. They burst through the aisles, dodging falling merchandise and, and flickering lights. Finally, they reached the emergency exit, and to their surprise, it swung open effortlessly. Fresh air filled their lungs as they stumbled outside into the night. Did we make it? Jenna gasped, looking around. The store loomed behind them, dark and foreboding, but they were free. Or so they thought. As they caught their breath, a distant laughter echoed from the depths of Walmart, chilling them to the bone. The store seemed to pulsate with life, and Jenna knew this wouldn't be the last time they heard that haunting laughter. In that moment, she understood. Walmart was not just a store. It was a vessel holding onto memories and souls lost to time, trapped in a never-ending cycle. And somehow, it had chosen her to remember. Story number five. The fluorescent lights flickered overhead, casting eerie shadows across the rows of neatly stacked merchandise. It was just past midnight, and the Walmart in the small town of Millfield had emptied out, leaving only a handful of employees to manage the overnight shift. Among them was Emily, a college student trying to make ends meet. She had taken the late hours in hopes of having her days free for classes and studying. However, she quickly learned that working at night came with its own set of challenges. The store was often quiet, a stark contrast to the bustling daytime crowds. But this particular night felt different. There was an unsettling stillness in the air, punctuated only by the distant hum of the refrigeration units and the occasional beep of the scanner as Emily restocked the shelves. She couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. It was just her imagination, she told herself. After all, the store was notoriously known for its haunting stories, but she never put much stock in ghost tales. As she pushed a cart down the cereal aisle, Emily paused to check her phone. No new messages, just a reminder for an upcoming test. She sighed, glancing around the deserted store. It was always at this hour that the whispers began, tales of an employee who had vanished years ago, lost in the labyrinth of aisles and stockrooms. Some said he still roamed the store, seeking the one thing he could never find, peace. That thought sent a shiver down her spine, but she laughed it off and continued working. Around 2 a.m., she heard a rustling sound from the back of the store. The stock room was supposed to be empty. She frowned, pushing her cart towards the sound, her heart racing. Hello, she called out, her voice echoing through the stillness. Silence answered her. The rustling stopped abruptly. Emily peered into the stockroom but found nothing, just shelves stacked high with boxes and a faint odor of something sour. She took a deep breath, dismissing her unease as she turned to leave. As she exited the stockroom, a cold draft swept past her, causing the, the hairs on her neck to stand on end. She shivered but brushed it off, heading back to her cart. 
Just as she rounded the corner, the lights flickered again. This time, they went out completely, plunging her into darkness. Panic gripped her, and she fumbled for her phone, its light barely illuminating the aisle in front of her. Great, she muttered, trying to calm herself. Just what I need. With no immediate way to contact anyone, she made her way cautiously toward the front of the store, praying the emergency lights would kick in. The faint glow of the exit signs became her guide as she walked, each step echoing in the silence. Suddenly, a soft voice broke the quiet. Help me. Emily froze, her heart racing. The voice was faint, almost like a whisper carried on the wind. She strained to listen, hoping she was just imagining things. Is someone there? She called out, but all she heard in response was the echo of her own voice. Help me, the voice repeated, this time sounding more desperate. Torn between curiosity and fear, Emily followed the sound, her feet moving on their own accord. The voice led her to the frozen food aisle, where the lights had flickered back on, casting a sickly glow on the frosted glass doors. She scanned the area but found no one, just rows of ice cream and frozen vegetables. Where are you? She whispered, feeling foolish for talking to thin air. But the voice continued, faint yet persistent. She could feel it pulling her deeper into the store, into the dark corners she had never dared to explore. Emily hesitated at the end of the aisle. Should she call for help? But who would believe her? As she stood there, the temperature seemed to drop even further, her breath forming small clouds of mist in the air. Help me? The voice was clearer now, almost directly in front of her. Gathering her courage, Emily stepped into the next aisle, glancing around. A flicker caught her eye. There, at the far end of the aisle, she saw a shadow moving, a fleeting figure that seemed to disappear as soon as she focused on it. The voice echoed again, now sounding more like a wail, and a chill ran down her spine. Just then, the lights went out again, plunging her into darkness. This time, a flicker of panic surged through her veins. Emily reached for her phone, desperately pressing the button to activate the flashlight. The beam cut through the darkness, illuminating the empty aisles. But then she saw it, a dark silhouette standing at the far end of the aisle, just beyond the reach of her light. It was too tall and too thin to be human. Emily's breath quickened and she stumbled backward, heart pounding in her chest. The figure stepped closer, its features obscured by shadows. Help me, it pleaded, the voice echoing as if coming from all around her. The lost spirit, Emily's heart raced as the shadowy figure edged closer, its elongated form twisting unnaturally in the dim light of her phone. The once familiar aisles of Walmart felt like a maze of terror, each row closing in around her, suffocating her with fear. She had heard the stories, but standing before what seemed to be a ghostly apparition was a far cry from folklore. Who are you? Emily managed to stammer, her voice trembling. The figure hesitated, its form flickering like a broken light bulb. Help me, it rasped again, more urgent this time, the voice trembling with a sorrow that sent a chill down her spine. I can't find my way. Instinct kicked in and Emily turned on her heels, sprinting back towards the exit. The once silent store was now a cacophony of whispers, each sound echoing her desperation. Help me. The plea seemed to follow her, reverberating off the aisles and sending her heart racing faster than she thought possible. She rounded a corner and darted towards the front of the store nearly tripping over her own feet. Just as she reached the electronics section, the lights flickered back to life, illuminating the store with a harsh, fluorescent glow. But the momentary relief faded when she glanced over her shoulder. The figure was gone. Breathing heavily, she slowed down, her mind racing. What had she just seen? Was it real or had exhaustion taken over her imagination? She leaned against a shelf, struggling to calm her breathing. The store felt too quiet, the silence now oppressive, filled with the echoes of her racing heart. Emily? A voice called out, breaking the stillness. It was Mark, a fellow employee. He stepped out from the back room, looking disheveled but relieved to see her. I thought I heard someone shouting. Are you okay? Mark, she exclaimed, rushing to him. I saw something, a figure. It asked for help. Mark frowned, glancing around as if the very mention of a ghost might conjure it back into existence. You know the stories, right? About the guy who disappeared here? They say he's still looking for something. What do you mean? She asked, confused. Years ago, a night stalker vanished without a trace, Mark explained, his voice low as if afraid the walls might be listening. P 
People say he died somewhere in the store, and sometimes you can still hear him. Others have seen him too. Emily felt a wave of nausea wash over her. She had brushed off the tales as urban legends, but now they felt too real. I think I saw him, she whispered. Mark's expression turned serious. You shouldn't be alone in the store after hours. It's dangerous. Just then, the lights flickered again, plunging them into darkness for the briefest moment before returning. The air felt charged, crackling with an energy that made Emily's skin prickle. A sharp, cold breeze swept through the aisle, and Emily shivered, instinctively moving closer to Mark. I'm not going back there, she said, pointing toward the aisles that had felt like a prison just moments ago. We need to get out of here. Agreed, Mark said, his eyes darting toward the exit. Let's head to the front and call for help. As they made their way towards the entrance, the atmosphere shifted. The shadows seemed to lengthen, reaching out toward them, and every creak of the building felt amplified. Emily couldn't shake the feeling that they were not alone. The whispers returned, swirling around her, becoming a chorus of voices, each one desperate and pleading. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed from the back of the store, followed by the unmistakable sound of something dragging across the floor. Emily's heart raced anew. What was that? She gasped, gripping Mark's arm. I don't know, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Stay close. They crept forward cautiously, their footsteps muffled against the tile floor. As they approached the electronics section, the flickering lights cast strange shadows that danced on the walls. The sounds intensified, a faint wail, like a sorrowful moan drifting through the aisles. Emily's grip tightened on her phone, the flashlight trembling in her hand. What if he really needs help? She said, the horror of the night weighing heavily on her. Or he's trying to lure us in, Mark warned. We need to be careful. But the pull of curiosity outweighed their fear. They took tentative steps toward the source of the noise, drawn by the anguish that seemed to permeate the air. As they rounded the corner, they froze. There, standing in the middle of the aisle, was the same shadowy figure Emily had seen earlier, its translucent form illuminated by the flickering lights. Its face was obscured, but Emily could feel its sadness as if it were a living thing. Help me, it pleaded, extending a hand toward them. What do you want? Emily asked, her voice trembling with fear and compassion. The figure faltered, as if struggling to maintain its form. I need to be found, it whispered. Help me to be free. Emily and Mark exchanged a look of understanding. The spirit was trapped, lost in the liminal space between life and death, unable to find peace. Maybe we can help you, Emily said, stepping forward despite the instinct to run. What do you need? The figure pointed toward the stockroom, its voice growing faint. Find my name. Suddenly, the lights flickered violently, plunging them into darkness once more. They could hear the dragging sound again, closer this time. Emily felt a rush of panic but steadied herself. They had to find out what the figure wanted. Okay, Mark whispered, determination settling in. Let's find this name, we can do this. With a shared look of resolve, they headed toward the stockroom, the shadows closing in around them. The stockroom loomed ahead, a cavern of shadows filled with towering shelves and stacked boxes that seemed to swallow the light. Emily's heart thudded in her chest as they approached the door, a sense of foreboding washing over her. The whispers grew louder, intertwining with the cold air that seeped through the cracks around the doorframe. Are you ready? Mark asked, glancing at her, his face set with determination. Let's do this. Emily replied, trying to mask the tremor in her voice. Together they pushed open the heavy door, the creaking hinges echoing ominously in the stillness. Inside, the stockroom was a maze. The shelves were lined with boxes labeled with all sorts of products, batteries, toys, cleaning supplies, everything that filled the store. But there was something else. The air was thick with an unshakable heaviness, as if the memories of lost souls lingered in every corner. Emily turned on her flashlight, illuminating the narrow paths between the shelves. What are we looking for? She asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Maybe a name tag or something personal, Mark suggested, scanning the area. We need to find a clue about who this spirit was. As they moved deeper into the stockroom, the lights flickered ominously again, casting shadows that twisted and danced around them. Emily couldn't shake the feeling of being watched her skin crawling with apprehension. Do you think he was a night stalker? She pondered aloud, recalling the ghost stories. Maybe, Mark replied, rifling through a box. If we can find something that belonged to him, it might give us a way to communicate. 
They spent what felt like hours sifting through boxes, unease settling in. Each creak of the floorboards and shuffle of the boxes made them jump. The whispers had turned into desperate cries, echoing around them like a mournful symphony. Just then, Emily spotted something glinting beneath a stack of boxes. She knelt down and pulled it out, a small tarnished name tag. She brushed off the dust, revealing the name Evan etched in faded letters. Mark, I found something, Emily exclaimed, holding up the name tag. He rushed over, his eyes widening as he took it from her. Evan, that's it. This has to be him. As they stood there, the atmosphere shifted. The air felt charged with energy, and the whispers crescendoed into a chorus of anguished cries. Help me. Evan. Evan, can you hear us? Mark called out, his voice steady despite the rising tension. We found your name tag. What do you need? The room went cold, and the figure of Evan began to materialize before them, clearer than before. His face was a mixture of sorrow and relief, his features gaunt and pale. Thank you, he whispered, his voice carrying the weight of years lost. I've been trapped for so long. What do you need to be free? Emily asked, her heart pounding in her chest. I need to remember, he replied, his eyes reflecting deep sadness. I can't leave without my last moment, the moment I was taken from this world. Help me remember. The shadows shifted, swirling around him as if trying to draw him back into the darkness. You have to tell us what happened, Mark urged, his voice filled with urgency. We can help you find peace. Evan's expression twisted in anguish. I was stocking shelves, it was late, there was a crash, then nothing. What do you remember after that? Emily pressed, feeling a connection forming with the lost spirit. Just darkness, he murmured, a tear sliding down his cheek. I couldn't find my way. I thought I was still working, but I couldn't leave. As he spoke, the air shifted again, filled with a palpable tension. Emily glanced at Mark, who nodded, understanding what she was thinking. We need to help him remember how he died. Is there a way to trigger that memory? I was with a friend, Evan said suddenly, his voice rising. He was supposed to help me, but he left. I thought we were finished for the night. I thought he was coming back. A sudden realization hit Emily. Mark, do you remember the stories? They said another employee had left him behind. Maybe if we can find out what happened to that friend, it will help him. Mark nodded, determination in his eyes. We need to check the employee files. They might still have records from that time. Let's go, Emily said, her heart racing with urgency as they rushed back towards the main area of the store, Evan's figure flickering like a dying light behind them. They found the old employee records in the manager's office, cobwebs clinging to the files. Emily and Mark sifted through the dusty papers, searching for anything that could connect to Evan. After what felt like an eternity, Mark pulled out a file with the name Jeremy written on the cover. This is it, he exclaimed, flipping it open. Jeremy was Evan's friend. He worked here too. As they read through the notes, a dark cloud loomed over the room. The story was tragic. Jeremy had left the job unexpectedly, leaving Evan alone on that fateful night. The last entry mentioned an accident in the stockroom, but it provided no details on what had truly happened. Jeremy, you have to remember. Emily called, her voice rising. Help us find the truth. Suddenly, the lights flickered violently again and Evan's form appeared before them, more desperate than ever. He left me, Evan cried, anguish etching into his features. I couldn't find him. I couldn't find my way. As the atmosphere thickened, Emily felt a surge of compassion. Evan, we're here to help you. You're not alone anymore. You can be free. The room filled with an overwhelming energy and Evan's figure began to shimmer, his sorrow mixing with a glimmer of hope. I need to forgive. I need to let go. Then let go, Mark urged. You can find peace. We'll help you remember. In that moment, the shadows coalesced around them, whispering promises of freedom. With a last, haunting wail, Evan's figure began to dissolve, the sorrow lifting from his presence. Thank you, he whispered, his voice fading like the last echoes of a dream. With one final flicker, the store was plunged into darkness, and Emily felt a rush of wind swirl around her, lifting the weight of sorrow from her shoulders. The lights flickered back on, illuminating the stockroom in a serene glow. Emily and Mark stood in stunned silence, their hearts racing. They had helped a lost spirit find peace, but the memory of that haunting night would linger with them forever. Did that really just happen? Mark asked, disbelief etched on his face. I think it did. Emily replied, her voice trembling with the weight of their experience. 
As they stepped outside into the cool night air, a sense of calm washed over them. The store felt different now, lighter, as if a burden had been lifted. The ghosts of the past had finally found their way home.